There are more and more survivors who are passing away each day, which means the window to hear directly from a residential school survivor is slowly closing, which means the archive and the survivor stories and experiences we hold is going to be a primary resource for individuals who are looking to listen, hear, as well as experience those stories from survivors who have since passed on. When it comes to the NCTR's mandate, we are first and foremost an archive to preserve in perpetuity all the materials that we inherited from the TRC. We are also here to ensure that survivors and families have access to this history, that educators are able to teach this history in the classroom, and ensure that we're helping foster healing and reconciliation through access to this content and ensuring that this history is never forgotten or repeated. One of the pieces that I really love about working in the NCTR archive is that we're able to give an Indigenous voice to very colonial archives. A lot of the records come from churches as well as from the federal government, which has a very specific scope as well as narrative. The great thing about our archive is not only do we have these formal records from the government and churches, but we also have survivor statements and statements from intergenerational survivors and others who've been impacted by the residential school system. For too long we've recognized that the, the definitions, the identities, um, the meanings, the understandings of Indigenous people were um, understood within a framework of, of, of colonial categories. Uh, first contact, royal proclamation, um, the creation of reserves, the Indian Act. All of these things are very much settler-defined methods of understanding Indigenous peoples. Our purpose is to try and break out of that colonial understanding and try to give weight and recognition to the fact that Indigenous peoples have lived very full and successful lives before first contact and continue to do so today. That is decolonizing the understanding of those records, which I would say um, as a fundamental principle of our mission statement of the archive is unique in any public archive in Canada that's breaking out of traditional rules and understandings of the meaning of research and records. In order to work towards reconciliation, the biggest component is following through with actions that demonstrate real societal change. And without these archives, without these survivors' voices, stories and experiences, the work towards those actions that demonstrate real societal change will be empty because individuals won't understand why these actions are needed for that ongoing work together.